The African National Congress is a political party in South Africa. The party originated as a liberation movement, known for its opposition to apartheid and has governed the country since 1994, when the first post-apartheid election resulted in Nelson Mandela being elected as President of South Africa. The African National Congress, founded on the 8th of January 1912, in Bloemfontein as the South African Native National Congress, the organization was formed to advocate for the rights of black South Africans. When the National Party government came to power in 1948, the NC's central purpose became to oppose the new government's policy of institutionalized apartheid. To this end, its methods and means of organization shifted. Its adoption of the techniques of mass politics, and the swelling of its membership, culminated in the defiance campaign of civil disobedience in 1952-53. The NC was banned by the South African government between April 1960, shortly after the Sharpeville massacre, and February 1990. During this period, despite periodic attempts to revive its domestic political underground, the NC was forced into exile by increasing state repression, which saw many of its leaders imprisoned on Robben Island. Headquartered in Lusaka, Zambia, the exiled NC dedicated much of its attention to a campaign of sabotage and guerrilla warfare against the apartheid state, carried out under its military wing, Umkanto We Size which was founded in 1961 in partnership with the South African Communist Party. The NC was condemned as a terrorist organization by the governments of South Africa, the United States, and the United Kingdom. However, it positioned itself as a key player in the negotiations to end apartheid, which began in earnest after the ban was repealed in 1990. Solomon Kalashi Malang was a member of the African National Congress. Solomon Kalashimai Lang was born in Pretoria on the 10th of July in 1956. He attended Mamelodi High School up to Standard 8, but did not complete his schooling as a result of the school's closure due to ongoing riots. He joined the African National Congress in September 1976 and left the country to be trained as an Umkanto we size the spear of the nation soldier. The training was received in Angola and Mozambique and on the 11th of June 1977 he returned to South Africa as a cadre, heavily armed, through Swaziland to assist with student protests. He left without informing his family who thought he was still selling goods on trains and had ended up in Petersburg. Malang left a letter under his brother's pillow. On the 11th of June 1977 their cell crossed the border into the South African town of Pyagrishev. They moved around, staying at the homes of various family members and contacts. At each stop they hid parts of their DLBS. Certain items were left for the use of other cadres who would pass through the area later and others were to be used by local communities for the June 16th protests. On the 13th of June 1977, Malang and his companions, Monty Johannes Matlung and George Lucky Malang, were accosted by police in Gough Street, Johannesburg. Lucky Malang managed to escape, however. The three comrades in arms, each carrying a large suitcase, were climbing into a taxi in Diagonal Street in the center of Johannesburg. An ordinary policeman became suspicious and grabbed one of the suitcases. An Alaska 47 assault rifle and a hand grenade fell out. As the first anniversary of the Soweto uprising was just three days away, police presence was strong and evident. In the ensuing gun battle two civilian men were killed and two wounded. Solomon Malang and Matlung were arrested. Malang and Matlung were brutally abused while in police custody. The police detained them under the 90-day detention law giving the state time to fabricate a case against the pair. 
Before the trial could commence, Motlung was so badly bitten that he sustained severe brain damage. Clinical psychologist Anna Venter declared Motlung unfit to stand trial. Solomon's mother and brother not knowing what was happening were taken to see him. Solomon and his mother stood in silence looking at each other, and eventually Solomon asked his mother how the family was doing, she answered that they were all right. But after another period of silence she broke into a flood of tears. Solomon then asked his mother, Why are you crying in front of these dogs? I don't care what they do to me. And if they spill my blood, maybe it will give birth to other Solomons. Milan, among others, was charged under provisions of the Terrorism Act of 1967. The act was enacted after the Rivonia trial, with the aim of tightening security legislation and preventing a recurrence of acts of sabotage reminiscent of those carried out in 1961. Another law that was passed and directly affected Mylang was the Criminal Procedure Act of 1967. The law provided for stiffer sentences for murder with aggravating circumstances. Over and above all of these laws, it was the principle of common purpose that most affected Mylang and many others in political trials. The legal principle originates in English law. The general idea being that when a group of people embark on an unlawful or dangerous activity and someone gets hurt, all the participants may be found jointly liable even if it is not clear precisely who caused the harm. It was this principle that alerted many protesters to the injustice of political assassination verdicts. Solomon Mylang was tried from the 7th of November 1977 to the 1st of March 1978, for charges associated with the attacks in Gox Street in June 1977. He was therefore charged with two counts of murder and several charges under the Terrorism Act. Malang pleaded not guilty to the charges. His counsel stated that he entered South Africa in June 1977 as part of a group of ten bringing arms, ammunition, explosives and ANC pamphlets into the country. The judge accepted that Mott Lung was responsible for the actual killings, but since he had been so brutally bitten during the course of his capture, he had suffered severe brain damage and was unfit to stand trial. However, as common purpose had been formed, Malang was therefore found guilty on two counts of murder and three charges under the Terrorism Act. He was sentenced to death by hanging on the 2nd of March 1978. On the 15th of June 1978 Solomon Malang was refused leave to appeal his sentence by the Rand Supreme Court, and on the 24th of July 1978 he was refused again in the Bloem Fontein Appeal Court. Although various governments, the United Nations, international organizations, groups and prominent individuals attempted to intercede on his behalf, Malang awaited his execution in Pretoria Central Prison, and died on 6 April 1979. Malang was hanged on 6 April 1979. Before going to the gallows he reportedly said, Tell my people that I love them and that they must continue the fight. My blood will nourish the tree that will bear the fruits of freedom. The execution provoked international protest and condemnation of South Africa's internal policy. In fear of crowd reaction at the funeral the police decided to bury Mylang in Etheridgeville. On the 6th of April 1993 he was reinterred at the Mamelodi Cemetery where a plaque states his supposed last words. Within a few months of his execution, from 1979 to 1983, units of the June 16th Detachment mounted a series of attacks inside South Africa. The Silverton siege occurred in January 1980, during an attack carried out by units of the June 16th Detachment known as TUM and G5. Other TUM units carried out attacks on police stations in Soweto, Wonder Boom in Pretoria and Sokmakar. Recently, 
More tributes have been paid in my Lang's memory. A statue of my Lang was unveiled in 2005 in Mamelodi, and a stamp bearing an image of my Lang was unveiled by the South African Post Office to mark the 30th commemoration of his execution on the 6th of April, 2009. Thank you for watching Death Row.